Hi guys, this is Coach Amber from Wreck-It Volleyball and Fistball Club. Today we are going over the serve locations and zones on a fistball field. In this video, we are going to break down why an athlete may want to serve to this location. We will have another video that talks about each of the numbers and why we choose them, but mainly this video we will be talking about zone one and when a server may want to try to serve here. If you're here as a defensive player, this is also a good time to look at it in reverse. So you can make sure that you're aware of some potential times that the other side will send a certain ball to you or each zone. So in zone one, the first thing that we want to talk about is where it is. So zone one is in the back portion of the court. If you notice, we uh, separate everything into quadrants. So we separate them into nine quadrants. A big thing that we want to do is also think about where the average person is going to be standing in the X formation. So this entire quadrant is technically zone one. But when you start to get to the higher levels, you have to be a little bit more precise with where you want to serve. So once you are graduating out of that intermediate play, you want to have a better idea of the best location that one would be based on the formation that the other team is playing in. So if you, the other team is playing in an X formation, most likely the back player will be behind the end line and they'll be cheating a little bit towards one and two. And the reason for that is because they need to be able to cover any ball that they can move. Now, obviously, as you move around, they're going to be shifting in their serve receive. But this is just as if you're in the middle of the field. This is the, the typical positioning that they're going to be standing in. And obviously, there's going to be adjustments that they make. The next person that we're going to be looking at is the right side striker. So again, these two players are going to be the main players that might go for this specific ball. And the reason for that is because that's the side of the field it's on and they have the easiest ability to get to the ball. So as a server, a big thing that you want to focus on is looking for certain tendencies in players and you want to look to see where their weaknesses are. And a big thing you want to do is identify if they're right-handed or left-handed. So in this position, if we have a back player who is left-handed, that means that typically speaking, they're going to be more dominant on this side of the field. So they may cheat a little bit this way off of the circle because they're left-handed and they want to cheat as much and get as much of their left arm in the play as possible. So if you have a player in the back that is left-handed, that means that their right arm will be where they're receiving it or they're going to have to cheat to go into another location. So if you serve to position one, one of two things will happen with the back player. So the first thing is if you serve here, it may force them to cheat over, creating an open hole to potentially eventually serve to two, or they're gonna be forced to use their right arm to take that ball. And if they're taking it with their right arm, they may not have as much precision or accuracy, or they may just not be as comfortable using it. So they, won't, they won't be as confident when they actually touch that first ball. So if you ever notice that the player is either cheating inward or they're left-handed, this is a really good place for you to actually send the ball when you're serving. The next thing is something that commonly happens in the intermediate level as well as in some women's play. As women and intermediate players are starting to build the um, strength to actually serve deeper, what will happen is the, the other team will notice that the ball is coming shorter and shorter and they think, oh, this team clearly can't serve deep, so why am I gonna waste all of my energy running to a short ball? So then what'll happen is they'll creep forward and let's say that they're here. Now, if you see that the player creeps forward and you send it deep, if the ball is bouncing on this one, that means that it's gonna go and then shoot back and they're not gonna be able to get to it. So now if they're, they're cheating forward, you're now aiming more for the, the, the ball to bounce near their feet rather than having it bounce a few feet in front of them where it'll be easier for them to receive it. So if you ever see a player shifting forward, any of these deep locations is really good because the bounce will make it that it's really difficult for them to get around the ball to be able to actually receive the ball. The next person that we talked about is our right side striker. So there's a few things that you wanna look for with them. So again, this position could be here, it could be here, it doesn't have to be directly in the middle. So if you have a person that's a right side striker and they're right-handed, again, that means that right here is their dominant arm. So this area is their weaker side. So you wanna aim for that area because if it's going here, they may wanna to try to take it because maybe they don't know if their back player is there, especially if they cheat over this player might try to take this ball. 
which may mean that they're taking it out of the air or they're trying to get around it using their non-dominant arm. So you'll have more of an out of system play if you aim for them if they are a uh, right-handed player. The next thing is that you wanna look to see if they are dominant strikers or if they are more of a defensive player or if they're a set air player. So what I mean by that is in some cases, the right side may be a backup setter, so they have more ball control. Another thing is they might want to be a left side striker if they're right-handed, but maybe they aren't in that game. So in some cases, they may have the mentality of, I don't want to touch this first ball, because in fist ball, once you touch the first ball, you're not allowed to touch it again until it comes over. So if you find that you have a player who doesn't want to touch the first ball, that means that they're going to hesitate or if the ball is a little lower than normal, they may still force the ball to be picked by the back player, which means that they're now running up and diving for it rather than it coming right to them. So now that may make more of a communication issue when they're playing. Another thing that isn't written here, but is a really good thing, is if you have a player who again cheats up and this player cheats up, now the angle can be a lot harsher and you can go more for a short one. So mainly one is behind this player and in front of this, but it's on the sideline. That's really the goal of where one is. So you wanna make sure that when you're aiming for that position, you're looking for some tendencies or just adjustments that the other team is making based on where you served last or where you have been serving throughout the game. So you wanna make sure that you're not serving to the same location over and over again. You wanna kinda of keep scanning and looking to see if there's any open holes. And if there isn't, then you wanna to look to see if there are any tendencies that you can kind of isolate and make sure that you're really bringing to light. So then they have to use their secondary um, skills rather than their primary. So I hope that this helps you out. We're gonna have all nine locations and talk about the strengths and weaknesses and when to use them. So definitely keep watching. All right, bye.